Hello everyone, Dovin here again with another tutorial on how to make cakes and snares and claps and hi-hats. I'm not going to be teaching you how to make the best sounding ones because these type of sound design requires a lot of tweaking and I'm going to leave that part to you. Also shout out to Nasco because I learned most of this stuff from watching his live stream. I never realized that there was a way to make drums this easy but apparently there is. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So basically, you need three things. A white noise, a synth that can generate a sine wave, and another white noise. So right here, I'm using FL as my main dot, but as long as you understand how the concept works, you can pretty much apply it to anything on any dot. You can actually generate white noises inside Edison by first inserting silences, like so, edit and then insert silence or just hit insert on your keyboard and again then select everything and then right click go to tools and then generate noise and boom all right so kicks i loaded my white noise inside a sampler because it's easier for me to manipulate the sample this way clone it and I'm going to load Harmer as my synth because this is the, the synth that I am most comfortable with. Route them inside different mixer insert and then grab a layer. And you can do this process like in the playlist, like dragging the, the, the white noise sample and then like draw a MIDI, like the, the synth MIDI and then the other white noise on the playlist. But this is the way I like to work because I'm really efficient this way, but you can do it that way as well. Then you basically do the thing, the set children thing and write a MIDI. This is our kick. So th here's the MIDI. Go to the first white noise, apply volume automation. Just a very slight, very, just a very fast like this. So make it as really clicky as possible with a little bit of attack. And by a little bit, I mean a little bit. And then the other white noise also apply volume envelope because this is going to be the tail. Now we get this and then go to your synth and apply volume envelope, a really short one, like so, with a little bit of attack as well to make room for the transient and also a pitch envelope like this. And keep in mind that we're going to be using a sine wave instead of a saw wave or a square wave because because yes then play the whole thing it's starting to make sense now play with the pitch of your sine wave and make sure three of them is routed in one mixer insert so that you can distort them together and compress them together so first compress it then distort it and then go to the transient, add an EQ that sort of looks like this, and then distort it. And kind of play around with uh, the EQ. Don't make it too high frequency-ish. Now, maybe distort it more. Then here is the boring part because in order to get a good sounding transient, you have to like cycle through the white noise. Maybe like do this to the volume envelope of the... Maybe make this a little bit mono and quieter. And the white noise, I can be like, I can add another envelope. Like a low pass white noise, low pass envelope like so maybe you'll remove the low end and you can always like eq it after and i recommend you use a linear phase eq kind of remove some of uh, like here and then like start messing around until you're happy of course and from here you just you just make a lot of changes until it sounds decent depending on what kick you want if you want like the housey kind of kick uh, house kicks tend to be a lot cleaner than dubstep kicks so maybe don't distort it that much 
if you're after that kind of kick, if you're after like trappy kicks, you can always try and distort the mids of the body, for example, or something like that. So I'm going to let you experiment with that. Moving on to the next part. The snare is basically similar to the kick, especially if it's like a very dubstepy kind of snare, which I'm a big fan of. As you can see, I cloned everything. What I did was just really high pitch kind of a uh, kind of envelope here. This is how everything sounds. So the body is just like it does the it's doing the same pitch envelope as the kick, but like slightly different and uh, volume envelope slightly shorter and I compressed it and I distorted it a little bit. That's the body and the transient is the same white noise. I just switched the position a little bit as you can see and the tail and this is the only thing that makes them different actually. The tail is uh, doing that, doing that filter motion because like a kick is usually just and then whatever tail that goes with it, everything will work. But like a snare, especially if it's a dubstep snare, it has to be like a push kind of uh, motion. As you can see here, I automated the frequency and the bandwidth. This is the bandwidth and this is the frequency. So it's like a push. And I frequency shifted everything down with this free frequency shifter because it was a little too high. And on the transient, same processing on the kick, on the body, nothing. On the bus, on the snare bus, a compressor, sound goodizer on the C setting. You could use OTT, but I chose Maximus and a wave shaper to distort the whole thing. And then an EQ to like get rid of some frequencies here and soft clipper and recorded. Take the part that I like this for example control delete get rid of the that little delay control delete then control a and alt f and maybe like fade that tail more then control e and you get a decent sounding snare so moving on to the clap it sounds like this and as you can see already a clap is literally just a white noise with this kind of volume automation. But here I did it manually with 3D Balance, which sounds like that. So obviously it heavily relies on the processing because with no effect, it sounds like this. Just the white noise with the volume envelope. So it's really not that hard. First, distortion, because like the noise itself was kind of quiet. So I had to like boost it. Then art compression, as you can see here, it's doing a lot of work. 3D balance, which does this thing. This is the core thing of the entire clap because like a clap, like electronic clap, at least is usually like this. It's just like really fast kratata and then fade out. That's the kratata right there. And then EQ and this boosts like this frequency right here, like the mid frequency. I had like boost these like frequencies a little bit because it was really quiet again. It sounded so thin without the boosts. And this, this automation, basically the bandwidth of the first thing here. Yes, that is going really high up to almost nothing. And then OTT which does typical OTT stuff and then any EQ, like clean up the super high end and then saturation free gain cranked almost all the way up and a little bit of uh, saturation and we can basically record that and it looks like this and we can like fade the sound for example like fade the sound like so control e. And one last thing, I slowed down the noise because like the original pitch was fine, but it's too like, it's too bright like that. I slowed it down. Now it sounds more like an actual clap, at least the clap that I'm looking for. And we get a freaking clap. All right. So no hi-hats. A hi-hat or any symbols are literally just a volume envelope white noises. This one 
this one is a white noise is the same white noise i've been using and just a volume envelope and with this eq that boosts this particular frequency this is how it sounds like just being a white noise with just this eq and a volume envelope it sounds like a hi-hat but again you can literally just do anything and here i did this of simple craziness it's not very crazy it's crazy just a little bit this is just a really fast delay and i enveloped the wet knob as you can see here i used a uh, envelope controller the way you use envelope controller in patcher in the effect version of patcher you load it then you basically create a midi port it could be anything in this case i used zero load midi out on the channel rack and find it here so this is port zero which is in this case here as you can see here port zero but it could be anything so yes that's how you load envelope controller inside patcher effect and this is a weird reverb this is a pew pew flanger that does pew 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 sound I kind of mixed them together with the original signal you can see here. This is the fast delay, reverb, and the flanger. And that's about it. The easiest way to make electronic drums. If you guys found it helpful, consider liking. And if you really want to make me happy, subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.